knew that something so beautiful in the spring and the summer could be so good for you in the fall. Let's talk about growing roses, rose hips, and why are we talking about this now? Because fall is the best time to plant. Welcome, I'm Sherry Traxler with Vireo Life, author of Go Forward, 28 Days to Eat, Move, and Enjoy Life God's Way. I'm going to try to do this without sunglasses so we can make some eye contact, but wow, it's a little bright today for me. Rose hips. When you are thinking about fall landscaping or planting in the fall for next year, think about planting rose bushes. Fall. Let's go ahead and talk about planting in the fall. When you're planting bushes, and especially, well, today we're talking about rose bushes, in the fall when you plant them, it allows the roots to go ahead and get established before the plant goes dormant for winter. Then the roots are already established. So in the spring, you know, when everybody else is out starting to plant in the spring, you are already getting bushes that are growing and producing flowers and producing fruit and in this case, kind of a pseudo fruit, because all the energy can be put into growing versus establishing root because it did that in the fall before winter. So get the rose plants and go ahead and plant them. Question is, what kind? If you're like me, I am lazy when it comes to landscaping. And by lazy, I mean, when I plant, I don't want it to just be pretty. I want to be able to eat it or use it medicinally. And so it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna plant just a regular modern rose bush. I wanna plant an old fashioned rose bush that creates rose hips. I'm going to completely mispronounce, I'm sure, the two old fashioned roses that are really popular for this, Rosa rugosa and Rosa, Rosa canea. But I'll put that on the screen and I'll put it in the description below so you can see how to spell it so you can find it because you can't find it based on my pronunciation, I'm sure. So the roses create rose hips. What does that mean? After a rose forms, it opens and then it falls off. The leaves fall off and it leaves this little green bud. And that little green bud grows and begins to turn color. Well, once it turns color, then it begins to draw the animals because these are tasty treats for the animals. We have a lot of deer that come through. So what we do and we it looks really weird, you know, to have all of these little gift bags, but it works. We cover the rose hip that is just starting to turn color. We cover it and then the deer don't like it as much because they don't like the feeling of this in their mouth. So let me cut off one of these and open it and go ahead and harvest this. This has now turned color completely and has even dried some on the bush. So this is ready to, to go into an infusion, which is what I'm gonna to talk to you about next. I like to use rose hips in a tea. You take one, four, eight of them, depending on what strength that you want, and pour eight to 16 cups, or 18 to 16 cups, eight to 16 ounces of boiling water. Let it steep for I like to steep for up to 24 hours to really extract all the nutrients. And that is just how I use it for tea. I have also seen articles where you could use it in recipes and I will link a blog article, not one of mine, somebody else's who uses it in recipes. I'll link that for you. What are the benefits of rose hips? So other than them just tasting really sweet in a tea, these are also packed with vitamin C, vitamin E, polyphenols, all kinds of antioxidants, specifically antioxidants that can help with aging, which I'm out here with sunscreen on, I promise, but without 
sunglasses. Okay, I'm getting a little more sunlight around here. We need that for healthy skin as we age. Also can help with heart health. Also can help with, and this was really interesting doing the research on osteoarthritis pain symptoms and rheumatoid arthritis pain and symptoms. Anti-inflammatory. Now, I will say some of the research was done not on taking a whole rose hip and putting it into a tea or an infusion, but using the extract or using several teaspoons in a powdered form. So I've not seen research specifically, oh, you know, you take a few rose hips and you put them in a tea and it has the same effect. We don't know. However, the nutrients in this are the same because rose hip is rose hip. One of the antioxidants is telericide, and I'm probably mispronouncing that too. It specifically can help with weight loss. Again, whether or not throwing a few rose hips in your tea has the same effect as using the extract that was used in the research study, but they have been related to weight loss. So real quick takeaway. Number one, go to the nearest garden center, ask for an old fashioned rose that produces rose hips, purchase it, put it in the ground, prep the soil if you need to, then Watch in the spring as you begin to have beautiful roses come out, as the rose hips form, cover them if you need to, and then next fall, you will be enjoying rose hip tea. Let me know in the comments if this is something you want to try, if you're curious about it. Also let me know what other healthy garden topics that you want to know about so I can put that together for you. Thank you so much for being here. Subscribe, click that notification bell, and until next time, find your unique path and fulfill your potential.